Hello and welcome to this Sunday special. Olympic fever has hit us all and during the next hour we'll be taking a look back at the Olympic highlights from our recent outside broadcasts and interviews so that you can get a feel for what's been going on around the local area. Plus there'll be lots of Olympic themed music. So let's start by listening to a theme that we all associate with the Olympics and particularly running. You're listening to Radio Warnford, Hospital Radio for South Warwickshire. And today, the Olympic torch is making its way through Stratford-upon-Avon. I'm outside Shakespeare's birthplace, hoping to get a glimpse of the torch and perhaps have a chat with one of the runners, as well as the rest of the crowd. I am Camilla Hadland's mother. Ah, brilliant. Camilla Hadland, who is running the torch from outside Shakespeare's birthplace, down Henley Street. Obviously, it's a great honour. You know, what are you feeling? Uh, what are your feelings at the moment? Quite excited now and just starting to relax a little bit because it's been a very long build-up to today. Can you give us a, a quick insight as to what Camilla's day has been so far and uh, what she's been up to? <laughs> uh, well, she only returned from holiday early yesterday morning, which was a bit of a heart-stopping moment, just praying that the plane arrived on time yesterday. But she got back, bang on time, very safely. I'm now in the museum entrance to the Shakespeare's birthplace and I've got a very apt dressed gentleman with me here. What's your name, sir? My name is Robert Dover. I am the gentleman that started the Olympic Games in England 400 years ago. How did you do that? What, what happened uh, in those times, the Shakespearean England uh, in terms of Olympics? Well, in 1612, I came to a town called Chipping Camden, just to the south of here in the Cotswolds. And I started up a games called the Olympic Games, with a K on the end. Olympic Games that had great activities such as cudgel fighting, sword fighting, leaping, running, and of course feasting. And these were celebrated in Chipping Camden from 1612 up to the year 1652, when the miseries in Parliament closed them down. Very different from today's Olympic festival that we're seeing today, though. A different, but a similar, but on a smaller scale. There's the same mirth, it was the same great social occasion, bringing people together from all different classes to celebrate together. Brilliant. Thank you very much. It was uh, nice to see you in the modern day and age. It's a pleasure to be here in Stratford today. So what does the torch coming through town mean to you? Obviously, you know, not every town's had it come through. People have to drive miles to go and see it. Is it important that it's come through Stratford? Yeah, I think it's really good because yeah, we have a lot of um, heritage anyway. We're in Shakespeare's birthplace and everything and um, I think the torch coming through just, we just add to that or, you know another reason for people to come and see our beautiful town oh, brilliant uh, are you going to the games at all yes I am actually what are you what are you going to watch the Olympic swimming the Olympic swimming uh, anyone there you're particularly hoping to see not really I'm just going for the atmosphere and stuff. Well, that was Ben in Stratford, and we'll be going back to him in a short while. But after Stratford, the torch then moved on to Warwick, and um, Paul and myself were there, and we met some very lovely people. Looking forward to today? Oh, absolutely. For ages and ages, been looking forward to coming here. And now the sun's come out. It's absolutely wonderful, isn't it? The weather is on our side today, really aren't is, it? Really <laughs> I don't think we'd have this turnout if it wasn't. I don't know. <laughs> I think up north when they had the rain, a lot of people turned out anyway because it's once in a lifetime, isn't it? It is actually, yes. Because, I mean, we've held it three times in this country, I think. Well, I remember 1948, but I never saw... The I think it was 1907 or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was not about about then. I, I look it. <laughs> and uh, do you think it's good that we're old in the Olympic Games in this country? Well, I think it's about time we did. Was it 1948 was the last time, wasn't it? So, yes, it was our turn again. And I think it's absolutely... Absolutely right and great for Britain. And what do you think our chances are with the medals? Brilliant. Do you? I really do. Yes. Gold all the way? I wouldn't say all the way, but bronze, silver and a lot of gold. Have you got a favourite event? Diving and Tom Daly, of course, is just absolutely brilliant, isn't he? Are you from Warwick? We're just from outside Warwick and Wilson Morrill. What's your name? Nikki. And what do you think about the um, Olympics coming to the UK? I think it's great. I mean, I think it's something that we probably need to have here to sort of get people enthused about something that's going to uh, have an impact on quite a lot of people. What do you think about our medal chances? Um... Okay, I think I think we've done better in the last few um, championships. So, uh, you know, we've got a good chance at some of the athletics events, and 
rowing and things and swimming, things like that. So not too bad, I think. Right. And then is this your friend's then? It's my sister-in-law. Your sister-in-law. Right, so you've brought the uh, children out to see it. Yes. My yeah. niece is just in the brownie ah, just mama. over there. Oh, right. So it's a, a family day out as well. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you, what do you think about it? Back to the UK then. I think it's fantastic and it's a great opportunity to bring the whole country together, especially with the torch relay up and down the country. It's, yeah. um, I mean, I'm actually from London, so we're in the thick of it. Oh, right. Um, but seeing this up and down the country, I think it's been fantastic. And, mm. um, I think everyone's getting really G'd up for it now, aren't they? And, you know, it's less than a month to go and you know, bring on games. Are you going to cheer really loud when the torch comes past? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> A bit, loud, a bit louder than you said that. <laughs> You're going to cheer really loud. You're, you? You're going to have a competition who can cheer the loudest. <laughs> Who's going to win? Me. Me. Oh, well, Sarah, yeah. Ah. We're well, hoping in future years we might have an Olympian here. Olympiad. Are they Olympians? Yes. <laughs> Olympian. <laughs> you never know. Well, that was Spandau Ballet and gold. And, of course, that's what we're hoping to say lots of in these Olympics. Lots and lots of gold medals. Well, before that, we heard the torch going through Warwick. And from Warwick, it went on to Leamington Spa. And our roving reporter, Jude, was there to capture the moment. Can you hear the buzzbullers? I believe all the children have been given them this afternoon. Hi, my name is Jude, and today the Olympic torch is coming through Leamington Spa. I'm on the parade, hoping to catch a glimpse of it and chat with other hopeful onlookers. I'll be reporting from here all afternoon, hopefully catching up with some people in the crowd. A little bit of trivia for you about the Olympic flame. The flame is a tradition going back from ancient Greece, the time of the first games. It was lit from the sun on Mount Olympus. I believe at the moment you use a mirror. It's a massive concave mirror that they use to capture the sun's rays and then they light the first torch from there and then it's come all the way across by an aeroplane and then it'll end up in Leamington Spa this afternoon, as I say, for about five o'clock. In ancient Greece, the flame was also used to light the altar at the Temple of Zeus and that was kept alight for the whole of the Olympic Games. So there you go, a little bit of history for you. I'm going to attempt to talk to some people, hopefully above the noise of these buzzwallers. Can I ask how important is it that the Olympic Games are coming to the United Kingdom? Uh, quite important because you get a bigger chance to go and see it. You don't have to go hike across the world. Um, I think it's like, really good for the country. Um, it represents Britain and then it gives a chance for our runners and like inspirates uh, younger runners to run. And where are we this afternoon and what are you guys waiting to do? We're, we're in Levington and we're being torch guards. Uh, we're escorting the torch. And do you guys have a favourite Olympic sport, sorry? Um, yeah. I'd probably say the 800 metres and the gymnastics I really enjoy to watch. I think mine's the 1500 metres and trampolining. And do you hope to compete in those yourselves one day? If I'm ever good enough. Yeah. Yes, I hope yeah, definitely. Definitely. <laughs> and what do you think the chances are of us winning some medals in this Olympics, do you think? I think we've got a good chance, especially with Mo Farah. I um, think he could get some good medals. And Jessica Ennis, yeah. she'll get good medals. You're listening to Radio, Radio Wolford. We are we on Parade Leamington Spa at the Olympic, Olympic Torch Relay. Get, get well soon. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Basil Heatley, I uh, went to the 1964 Tokyo Olympics and ran the marathon um, and by virtue of my birth I've been invited here today. So what was it like being in the Olympics? Well a lot of very mixed emotions but by and large you know very very good because it was a good Olympics for us. It was extremely well organised, we all enjoyed it. And did you win? I was second. Congratulations. Thank you. Fancy a chat? 4500 is our internal phone number. Just pick up the handset on your bedside system. When the dialing number pad appears on your screen, dial 4500. You'll be in touch with Radio Warnford in an instant, and your call is free. That number again is 4500. Yes, that's the number to call if you were at the Torch Relay and would like to share your story live on the air with the other listeners. 
So off now to Kenilworth with Lee and Sarah before the torch took its rest for the night in Coventry. What do you think about today being here, the Olympic flame coming? I think it's um, I think it's an amazing day, and I feel very very proud to be British. That's exactly how I feel. <laughs> what about you? What's your name? Oliver. Oliver, hi. What do you feel about today? Well, it's a really good opportunity to see the Olympic torch, and it brings everyone together. You're absolutely right. May I say that Oliver has got the Olympic rings on one cheek and a Union Jack on the other, and he looks great. Thank you ever so much, guys. Thank you. Are you a local resident? No, not at all. We live in Knoll, but uh, we, we wanted to do a nice long walk today, so it was too early to see the Solly Hall one, which we thought was at 6 o'clock. So we've had is our that lovely, 6 a.m., is it? 6 a.m., big yep. pardon, 6 a.m. So, so we've had a lovely walk, and then uh, we've ended up here, which is what we wanted to do. And what made you want to see this torch relay today? Well, it's probably a once in a lifetime thing, especially for uh, an old codger like me. So therefore, uh, you've got to take the opportunity and, 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 and we should be part of it. Uh, have you got tickets yourself? My son has, yes. So I will be going to one um, one of the uh, the games. I think it's a basketball game um, for one of the smaller countries. And I'm ashamed to say I can't remember the name of the country. I won't worry too much about that. But I hope you enjoy watching them on the TV. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy your walk back home as well. So how far is that? Uh, Noel, probably eight miles, something like that. Thank you very much. And I'm with somebody. What's your name? Oh, Caroline. Caroline, who's come an awful long way to Kenilworth to see the torch. Where have you come from, Caroline? Abergavenny in South Wales. Does it not come through Abergavenny? Yes, it did, but I was on holiday. Ah. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, thanks very much for supporting Kenilworth. Keep on running there by the Spencer Davis Group. And we'll be hearing later just what happened as the torch passed through the towns of Stratford, Warwick, Leamington and Kenilworth. This is Radio Warnford, your free hospital radio station. During the Games, one of our members, Claire Spires, was lucky enough to be chosen as an Olympic volunteer. Sarah and Stephen caught up with her to ask exactly what she was doing. Say a big hello to Claire. Good evening. Good evening, Claire. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. And uh, where are you and what have you been doing? I'm working in event services, so that can be anything from taking uh, spectators to their seats, so that's when I get to see a bit of the action, uh-huh. uh, to checking people's accreditation. As I'm, as I'm sure you can imagine, there are lots of zones uh, in an arena, so it depends on where people are authorised to go. So today I was in judo, um, checking accreditation back of house, so... Um, it was about whether I could let through all of the athletes and their um, entourage, essentially, so coaches, families, all that kind of thing. Now then, ju- judo was a good place to be today for Britain, wasn't it? It was, yes. It was very loud. To be honest, I haven't seen the score, <laughs> um, but the whole place was shaking. I was like, well, something good has definitely happened. And when the athletes came back through, they were all skipping and laughing, which is always a good sign. Tell me, is the atmosphere down there as electrifying and as exciting as it appears on the telly? Because I have to say, I think the nation is gripped by it now. We've mm. suddenly got Olympic fever. Is there a yeah. real good buzz down there? Absolutely. Any time there is a GB, uh, Team GB person playing, the whole place goes got, wild. We've got some medal chances in Twy... Twy... How do you pronounce it? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Not Twy Cross the Zoo. Which is something yeah. completely different. <laughs> Brilliant. Good. Well, that, I mean, yeah. it sounds amazing. So there we have it, uh, an hour and a half of waiting, and in a mere moment, a town already so deep in history has witnessed yet another momentous occasion. Uh, I've been informed that unofficially over 10,000 people have lined the streets. Union uh, so jacks, lots of hooters and whistles, a couple of people in fancy dress. The atmosphere is really building in up. In the background, you can hear the local samba band, Sambassadors of Groove. They I think form- the crowd would be this... This excited, even if the support vans weren't here. Playing for the River Festival. Music was drowned out by DJ Jazzy Fresh uh, as his big blue Samsung party bus came by. <laughs> Makes you thirsty, this does. Coca Cola's coming. On the front of two cameras, by the looks of it. Coke cam. For finally realising what we've all just borne witness to. Normally, if you'd have blinked, you'd have missed it, but despite the quick changeover of the torch, Everyone seemed to have witnessed the 
the occasion in a sort of euphoric slow Hi there, motion. Hi this is Chris Hoy here. I'm at the NEC at the Cycle Show event and I'd just like to say a very quick message to all the patients at Warnford Hospital. I hope you're all doing not too badly and you're getting better and feeling a bit happier and I wish you all the very best and I hope the radio is cheering you up. And